All right, what's up, guys? It is Wednesday, March 15th. This is End Time Headlines, and I am your host, Ricky Scaparo, the founder, the pastor, and the voice of End Time Headlines. We've got a great program for you tonight. I'm going to show you three headlines tonight that are types and shadows of the days of Noah. These are probably, uh, most people have not paid attention to this because it's been overshadowed by the banking crisis and everything going on. So I'm excited to share this with you tonight. So without further ado, let's get after it. All right, what's going on, everyone? It is Wednesday, March 15th. Again, I am Ricky Scaparo, the founder, the pastor, and the voice of End Time Headlines. And if you're new to the program, this is your first time joining us. Somebody invited you in. You stumbled across our program. Whatever the case would be, you're watching this or you're listening to this tonight, let us know in the comment section below where you guys are joining us from and that you are new. Without uh, without further ado, before we get really into this thing and rocking and rolling, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to download our free app. Again, it is available on Apple and Play uh, Google Play Store. It is free. This way you can keep up with every headline and every podcast when it's readily available. If you're listening by Spotify or by Apple, it's if you just simply type in End Time Headlines in your Apple Store or your Google Play Store, Look for our official ETH trademark logo. Download that app today, and you're going to be set to go on all of our programs in the future. So now when I talk about uh, the days of Noah, I want to give you some scripture. We've talked about this on multiple times, uh, multiple occasions at different podcasts in the past. Uh, but we're, the, the scripture that most of us are familiar with is in uh, Matthew chapter 24. So let's take you there right now. Let's go to Matthew 24. Uh, this is going to be verse 36 through 38. But of the day and the hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but only my father. So this is talking about Jesus is emphasizing here that there's no mortal man that can know the precise day and hour that Jesus Christ is going to return out of heaven and set up his kingdom. Despite the many, many people that has attempted this, they have a 100% fail rate. But watch this. But we know through the scriptures, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, Jesus said, though you will not know the precise day nor hour, you can understand and discern the times and seasons in which we're in. And he, he even tells you that if you know your past, now he's speaking here in New Testament terms, but he would refer to the Torah, the law, the prophets, what we would call the Old Testament. He said, if you want to know that what's coming in the future, go back and study what happened in the past. So in regards to that, he refers to or references the days of Noah. And he says, as, as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. So having said that, we have three stories tonight. So let me just give you these right off the gate, right out of the gate. We're going to talk about uh, cosmic signs in the heavens. Then we're going to talk about uh, futurists who are now coming out, making the bro bold proclamations that by the year, I believe it's 2045, we're going to pull up the exact article in just a second, uh, 2045, that th they believe that we will reach the point where humans and machines will become one. So there's this, there's this talk of hybrids, uh, transhumanism, half machine half man artificial intelligence half man and it will be this merging together of this then uh, our final story i'm going to talk about a uh, an insect of all things an insect was discovered in arkansas recently that scientists say predates all the way back to prehistoric times now, so this is interesting. So buckle up and get ready because we're going to take you on a journey. So let's get after it. Let's talk about, I want to take you on a little bit of a trip to the past. 
Not very far, but we're going to take you back to January. You remember this story? Now, if you're listening by Apple or by Spotify, I'll read you the headline. A green comet was visible uh, in our solar system. It was visible by telescope, and it passed through. <clears throat> this was called the E3 comet. And astronomers and, and the quote-unquote experts on this predated the last time that this comet was visible was during the time that Neanderthals walked the earth. Now, again, I don't want to get into a debate on young earth versus old earth uh, differentials, whether you believe the earth is 2,000 years old and we're going into the 3,000th year, or some say 6,000 years going to the 7,000th year, or it is uh, what, or perhaps you believe in what's called a pre Adamite world, uh, or what. Some scholars call the gap theory where there is a time frame uh, that is missing uh, where they this is where they equate millions of years in between Genesis chapter one, verse one and Genesis chapter one, verse two. So, again, not here to debate that. That's not what I'm here to talk about tonight. But nevertheless, this green comet was considered to be rare. Um. Because it was pre, because it was said to have not had been seen. And again, I'm going to give you this number because this is what they're saying for 50,000 years during the Stone Age. And on January 12th, it made us the closest approach to Earth. And this thing, well, and it was a green comet. Interesting, very interesting to me. In fact, we did a whole program on this and I talked about <clears throat> the significance of comets. Now, I'm not, I don't want to rehash all of this. You need to go back. Go to our archives. It's on YouTube. It's it's on Apple Podcasts. It's on Spotify. It's you could probably find it on our app, on our official app. We did a whole segment on this, and we talked about how comets were. Uh, this is nothing new. Comets were seen and they were visible um, during the time of great wars, conflicts transitions disasters and they were they were perceived to be harbingers when these things were visible they were perceived to be harbingers not just uh by hebrews not just by uh ancient rabbis but even the egyptians and the mesotomian mesopotamians mesopotamians the Babylonians, the Samaritans, all these civilizations looked at these cosmic signs, howbeit comets and the heavens. The, they never perceived that these things were good as far as a good omen. They always perceived them to be a harbinger or a warning of something coming in the form of wars, desolations, and disasters or great transitions of empires. In fact, did you know that, and we pointed this out uh, in one of our last uh, segments, that one of these comets, I believe it was Hellbop, was predated all the way back. Now, these are this is by Hebrew uh, researchers and different ones who's done the, all the research on this, and they dated this, the original appearance that the Hellbop comet was seen was dated all the way back to watch this when Noah was building the ark during that time frame. So, what am I talking about? I'm talking about comets are seen again as harbingers. So, for for this comet to come through our solar system when it did, this green comet that I'm talking about. You think about everything that's going on. You think about we are on the verge of World War III. You think about the fact that we just came out of a quote-unquote pandemic, uh, pestilence, plagues. You think about the fact that we um, this, was, this was visible this year in 2023 during a time of all the, uh, the tumultuous environment of the economy. 
Now, this again, this is back in January. This is way before now when we're actually seeing a greater shaking in the economic realm. So we can all agree that the timing of this is very eerie uh, and, 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 and hard to say that it would be a coincidence. Now, remember, again, I want to emphasize to you that Jesus said that there would be signs in the sun, Luke 21, 25, 6, there would be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. And uh, when you go back all the way back to the book of Genesis, again, we pointed out that they use a term there called uh, signs and seasons. They use these terms, signs and seasons, which again mean a marker or a token or a um, an unusual occurrence. So it's it's rare that and unusual that we would have this green comet that has not been seen in our solar system visibly with the visible eye since all the way back to the Stone Age. Now here, now look at this. Here we have another comet. Now again, this is um. This is from foxweather.com. And they're calling this thing the, quote, comet of a decade. And it is set to whiz past Earth and likely the first visit. And now look at this time frame they're given. 4.5 billion years. Now, I know that's going to trigger some young Earth creationists and all this. And, and that's not what we're, again, that's not my verbiage this is not my rep i'm only reporting to you what i'm given okay so you can do whatever you want with that but look now let me read this while naked eye comments are rare visible roughly once in two years c20 23 a3 is what they're calling this thing could be among look at this the brightest in a decade when it visits next year so this thing is going to make its appearance next year. The comet is making its first visit since our inner solar system was created. So they're saying that this thing has never been visible since the creation of the earth. Whoa. Now, let me ask you something. Wouldn't that go all the way back to the time? That goes even farther back into the days of Noah. Because you had Adam and Eve, and then their descendants produced Noah. So th this is huge, guys. This is yet another, I believe, a sign in the heavens. This newly discovered bright comet visible to naked eyes, even from the suburbs of larger cities, will whiz past the earth in 2024. And by the way... This is also the same time frame that, watch this, let me pull, you, you got to see this on my screen, what I'm looking at here. Look at this, the, the second line <clears throat> of the great solar eclipse that's scheduled to take place April 8th of next year, 2024, and this will cause, that. this will form that X across the midsection of America or the Midwest port of a portion of America right there. Consequently on where the, the precise location of the new Madrid fault line is. We talked about that before on other programs, but look, but so check this out. Let's look, let's, let's talk about this for a second. So remember l the gospel of Luke said there will be great and fearful sights from heaven. Matthew said there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. And here we are next year. All right. So this year we had this green comet that was dated all the way back to its first appearance of the stone age. Then next year, we have another rare comet that is that is said to be so old that it has not been seen since the creation of the earth and we and it just so happens that it falls in the same year as the second solar eclipse that will uh that will shadow over the United States of America forming the X that we've all been talking about in prophetic circles 
Are you paying attention today? I'm telling you. Now, again, all these solar eclipses, blood moons, lunar eclipses, whatever you want to call them, comets, all of these things are looked at and perceived as harbingers. This, uh, again, this may not do anything for you, but for me as a watchman, this perks my ears right up. And I can't, I can't ignore this stuff. I can't overlook it. Um, and I know there's people out there that, oh, you know, that's all a bunch of hooey, fooey nonsense. I don't believe in all that stuff, but you know, whatever time will tell friends. But so far, these things that are deemed to be harbingers, look how many disasters are happening. Natural disasters, uh, economic disaster that we're in right now. Look at look what's happening within the church. Look what's happening in the 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 society of America. The fabric, the very fabric of of society, is falling apart at the seams. Peter Veres, Veres, I believe Veres, uh, who uh, he's an astronomer at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, is saying that this asteroid coming next year could be a comet of a decade. This comet, according to his report will be more than 70 million kilometers or 43 and a half million miles from earth. And it is set, it is dated to be around it when it makes its closest appearance around October 12th, 2024. So you have this solar eclipse in the spring and you have this fallen in the fall months, which would be also right around in the fall feast uh, on the Hebrew calendar in 2024. He goes on to say that currently the comet is between Jupiter and Saturn and is faint only and it's only accessible by larger telescopes. Only a, co a coma, the nebulous envelope around the nucleus of a comet is visible. But once it comes closer to the sun, the sublimation of ices could lift more dust from its surface. Quote, we don't know for sure if it will if it would survive its closest approach to the sun. However, he goes on to say, quote, and if it does, it may be either disappointing or surprising. Let me say that again. It could be disappointing or it could be surprising. Uh, so this is one that I think we need to be paying attention to again more in my opinion more harbingers more great and fearful sights from heaven signs in the sun moon and stars this falls on this category and you see how it shadows the days of noah do y'all see that with me so let me move on to the next let's move on to some more news that i want to cover into today's segment um i want to talk about this this is crazy um Look at this headline. This is studyfinds.com uh, or dot org. Excuse me. Studyfinds.org. Technologically singularity by 2045. Future is predict point where humans and machines become one. Most people are familiar with the deluge of artificial intelligence uh, apps that seem designed to make us more efficient and creative. We've got apps that take text prompts and generate art and controversial chat GPT, which raises serious questions about originality, misinformation, and plagiarism. Despite these concerns, AI is becoming even more pervasive and intrusive. It's the latest technology that will irreversibly change our lives the internet and smartphones were other examples but unlike those technologies many philosophers and scientists think ai could one day reach look at this or even go beyond human style thinking this possibility coupled with our increasing dependence on ai is at the root of concept in futurism called quote technological singularity this term according to study finds has been around for a while, uh, having been po popularized by science fiction writer Werner Vinge a few a few decades ago. Today, the singularity refers to... Uh, now, you got to clean out your ears and listen to this. It refers to a hypothetical point in time at which the development of artificial general intelligence, or AGI is the acronym, um, that is... AI with human level abilities becomes so advanced that it irreversibly change human civilization. 
It would mark the dawn of our inseparability from machines. Uh, let me give you the translation of that. We would, we're talking about Skynet T2 Terminator stuff here. Part man, part machine. It would mark the dawn of ins, uh, uh, inseparability excuse me, from machines. From that moment on, we won't be able to live without them without ceasing to function as human beings. That would be transhumanism. But if the singularity comes, will we even notice it? Guys, this is, I don't know about you, but you want to talk about stuff of nightmares. This, my friend, is right out of a page of one of the most terrifying sci-fi novels you could think of. To understand why this isn't the stuff of fairy tales, we need only to only to look as far as recent developments in brain computer interfaces, which they're calling BCIs. They are a natural beginning to the singularity in the eyes of many futures because they they meld mind and machine in a way no other technology so far has done. And of course, you knew this guy was going to be brought up, right? Elon Musk company Neuralink is seeking permission. By the way, they've already shot it down once from the FDA to begin human trials for this very technology. Again, merging man and machine, transhumanism. And by the way, this, uh, Elon Musk and all these other futurists, and these guys that are behind this have all warned about th this right here is the thing that they have feared the most. But yet they keep pursuing it. They keep advancing it. Makes you wonder, don't it? Musk has long said he believes brain implants will allow telepathic communication and lead to the co-evolution of humans and machines. Isn't that wonderful? He argues that unless we use techno technology to augment our intellects, we risk being wiped out by super intelligent AI. And he said, now let me give you another article, okay? And then we're going to talk about this because I know what you're thinking. You're saying, well, Brother Ricky, what has that got to do with the days of Noah? Because that technology wasn't even around then. So I don't know where are you going with this? Well, you know me, you're just going to have to get, you're going to have to stay in the car buckled up because we're going to take you on a ride and then we'll get there. Here's another article. This is from Popular Mechanics. Humans are on track to achieve immortality in seven years. Seven years. A new video from YouTube channel, uh, uh, Adagio, I believe that's how you pronounce that, revisits futurist Ray Kurzweil's Kurzweil's idea about how for humans, both singularity and immortality are shockingly imminent as in potentially just seven years away. That's an interesting number, isn't it? Both concepts may take a stretch of reality to attain, but Kurzweil and his supporters are quite limber. The idea of a singularity is the moment AI exceeds beyond human control and rapidly transforms society. That's what we just talked about for the last 10 minutes. Predicting this timing is tricky, to say the least. But Kurzweil says one crucial step on the way to a potential 2045 singularity is the concept of immortality. Possibly reached as soon as 2030. Guys, that is, again, seven years from now. And the rapid rise of artificial intelligence is what will make it happen. Kurzweil believes that our technological and medical progress will grow to the point that robotics, he dubs them nanobots, will work to repair our bodies at the cellular level as reported by Lifeboat, turning disease and aging around thanks to the continual work of robotic know-how and then uh, Viola immortality i believe that's how you say that there but so now, so now you're saying now brother ricky what in the world does that have to do with the days of no i'm glad you asked because you see we may have not had the advancement of the technology that we're seeing in our generation and our children seeing in their generation even though daniel predicted it he said that there in the last days knowledge would increase so this is nothing new this is not something that's should catch us off guard if we know prophecy, if we know the Bible. However, if when you go back to Genesis 6, 
there was uh, this concept, this this act of mixing humans with something else already existed. And it was called mingling the seed. It was in the, and I'm, of course, I'm referencing when the sons of God, that's in Hebrew, B'nai Elohim, and I believe, and there's a debate on this, and I absolutely, and I do not, uh, you know, there's some things that I'm willing to compromise on this, but this is one that I've suffered, that I have uh, studied extensively for years. And I believe 100% what I'm about to tell you, that there was angels that existed with God in the time of Lucifer that fell with Lucifer. Some of these angels, did, the Bible says they held not their first estate. Their assignment was supposed to be to teach men the ways of God, but instead there was around 200 angels on a mountain. You can find all this in uh, historical accounts, Jewish history, and even the book of Genesis chapter 6 talks about these sons of God, these angels. By the way, they're mentioned in Job chapter 1 as well. They went into the daughters of men. They had relations with the daughters of men, they impregnated them and produced a lineage of what the Bible calls Nephilim. They were giants. They were hybrids. They were demigods because they were partial angelic and they were partial flesh and blood, human. Now, how deep you want to go with this? There is some belief if you've ever wanted to know where evil spirits come from, there is a, there's a strong belief in theological circles that when this when these uh, these giants died because they were half angelic and they were half human, they were not permitted to go to these uh, eternal abodes such as Hades or again I'm going back to uh, Old Testament. Hades or Abraham's bosom, as the Jews called it, this this underground compartment that was separated by a great golf fix. That's Luke sixteen talks about this, and on 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 the on the lower half was Hades or hell, and in the upper compartment was a place called Abraham's bosom. You can find all this in Luke sixteen, and because the spirits of these demigods uh, were again, uh, were corrupted because uh, God said it was a, an evil seed, an evil corrupted lineage. This is one of the reasons why God had to destroy the earth by water is to get rid of these giants. But then we know they, they existed even after the flood because David had to fight them off. Goliath was one of them. Hello. And he had three other brothers, three or four other brothers. It's been a long time since I've studied that. But so here, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about you had this mingling of the seed, the genes. Look what's going on with CRISPR. Look what's going on with gene editing. Look what's going on with designer gene editing. Let's go. Let's let's talk about the animals and the mingling of the seeds of animals. And by the way, that was happening in the days of Noah as well, according to early church or not early church, but early Jewish writings, such as the book of Jasher talks about that. Okay, so here we are again. This is nothing new. It's just being revisited. Same spirit, same philosophy, same concept, and same practices just in another generation. Because you think about it, all those generations have died out and we have a new, we have new generations rising up that they, they don't, and most of them don't even understand. They don't know. They have no, um, no knowledge of what the things that were going on way back in the days of Noah. So this again, days of Noah, as it were in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the return of the son of man. And let me give you another concept here. So according to this futurist, we're on track to achieve immortality. Well, look at this. If you go back to the days of Noah, look how long men lived on the earth. Look how long Methuselah lived and Enoch lived. 
and Noah lived. And all these, they, their lifespans were far greater than us. And as, as time has went on, it's dissipated. It was man's years should be 120. And then you go to Psalms chapter 90, verse 10. And he says, uh, it says 70 years or 80 by reason of strength. But now we live in the age of technological advancement in uh, the medical industry, where now they're saying that we're going to reverse aging, that we're going to increase the lifespan. So again, days of Noah. Y'all see that? This is this is incredible. So I wanted to throw that out there at, at you. Now, want to get to uh, I want to get to our last story. We're 30 about 30 minutes into this. Let me give you this last story. This is incredible here and I and I want to give this to you because most people will skip right over this. Think nothing nothing of it. Here it is. <clears throat> Giant flying insect found on Walmart building. Uh, of course, it's going to be Walmart, by the way. Um, turns out to be a Jurassic era find. Check this art. This is incredible. Here's a picture of this thing. Uh, this giant lace wing or, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. No way. Not going to do it. But this is a, uh, a prehistoric insect that predates the dinosaurs. It vanished, it's said to have vanished in the 1950s, but has recently been rediscovered in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And the, the laughing part, the laughable part to this to me is that it was find that it was found on a on a Walmart building. Really? Now you say, well, why is that funny, Brother Ricky? Listen, I'm sorry, but if you live in the South, that's funny. Because if anything crazy, unusual, abnormal, uh, weird, bizarre is going to happen, you could take it to the bank. It's going to happen at a Walmart. Can I get an amen from all my Southerners? Okay, so this thing was found outside of a Walmart. Um, Michael Scavarla who is the director of Pennsylvania State University's Insect Identification Lab, spotted this Jurassic era creature, other, otherwise known as a giant lace wing, on a shopping trip in 2020, in 2012, excuse me, when he was a doctoral student of entomology at the University of Arkansas. I remember it vividly because I was walking into Walmart to get milk and I saw this huge insect on the side of the building. I thought it looked interesting, so I put it in my hand and did the rest of my shopping with with it between my fingers. I got home, mounted it, and promptly forgot about it for almost a decade. So again, this wasn't just discovered uh this year, it was discovered in 2012, but let's just read on here. Uh, he initially had misidentified the lace wig as an, an antlion, a dragonfly-like insect that shares certain features, including long transparent wings with the lace wing. But after presenting the insect to his online entomology course in the fall of 2020, he realized that what he had all, what he had had all these years was something much rarer and more impressive. Again, they used the word rare or rarer. He performed further DNA analysis to confirm the identity of the insect and the giant lace wing has now become part of the frost and entomological museums collection at Penn state. Again, this thing vanished in the 1950s from Eastern North America, where it was formerly widespread, according to uh, 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 this individual who co-authored co uh, what was published in proceedings of the entomological society of Washington. So, here is again this is what I at least I think this is interesting because these are creatures that are dated back to the times of what we would call the dinosaurs. Now I know you got listen, you got people out there that think the weirdest that they think there was no there was never such thing as dinosaurs even though we found multiple bones of dinosaurs. 
they're all over the place and they still don't believe it. They believe the earth is flat and I don't want to get in all that. So there's all these where you've got people that deny atrocities that happened in Germany to the Jewish people. I don't want to say the word because we want to, you know, we don't want any kind of negative strikes or anything on the channel if we can avoid it. But my point is, here's what's interesting to me. If you go to the book of Job, I want to let's let me share this screen with you. This is Job. Uh, we're in the 40th chapter of Job, verse 15, for you guys that are listening. Job, here in his writing, describes an animal, a creature. Listen to what he says. This is verse 15 through 19. Oh, well, actually, it goes even farther than that. We'll read this. Ready? Here we go. J uh, Job, what is it? Job 40. 40 verse 15 look now at the behemoth somebody say behemoth which i made along with you now notice this creature behemoth and we'll talk more about what this is was made along with you god is speaking to job job was what human right and he said i made behemoth along with you so he made both behemoth and man together this is very important when i want to show you this and now he describes this creature. It eats grass like an ox. His strength is in his hips. His power is in his stomach muscles. He moves his tail like a cedar. So he has a long tail and it's like a cedar. His sinews of his thighs are tightly knit. His bones are like be beams of bronze. His ribs are like bars of iron. And he is the first of the ways of God. Now the King James uses a term called the chief of God's ways, which means he's the, in the ranking, he's the first of God's creation. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this right here describes, to me anyway, a dinosaur. Now, I, when I did a little bit of research on this, uh, I, and I just typed this in, what is behemoth animal in the Bible? Some say it's a hippopotamus. I don't believe that. Just based on the description of this animal. Because you do realize that Job, is, uh, scholars say that Job is could be one of the oldest books of the Bible and even dated back before the book of Genesis was even written. So I don't believe this is a hippopotamus. I don't. Most of these Bible apologists say that behemoth, which is in Hebrew, literally means four-legged beast, is referring to an elephant, hippopotamus, or crocodile, crocodile. Well, none of the description of Job 40 really describes that to me. That doesn't really leap out to me. Now, here's what's it. Now, I, so I dug a little bit further. And I this was interesting to me. Now, this is a um, this is an article from CBSnews.com. This was dated back in 2017. Look at this. Ready? A study proclaims <clears throat> a newly named species, the heavyweight champion of all dinosaurs, making the scary Tyrannosaurus Rex look like a munchkin. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. At 76 tons, the plant eating. Now look at the name they gave it. Behemoth was as heavy as a space shuttle. The dinosaur's fossils were found in southern Argentina in 2012. Researchers who examined and dated them said the long neck creature was the largest of a group of large dinosaurs called titanosaurs. So when you start digging into this, discover that is it's very likely that behemoth was actually, now I want to I want to show you this too, because I'm going to pull it up and show you this on the screen. What would be called a sauropod, which uh again is a or we could say a brontosaurus. And here's a, and you're seeing the picture of this on your screen. So, and it all fits the category. Look at the look at the legs, it describes the neck, it describes the body, the sinews, the the, the tail like a cedar. But then you go into uh the book of Job, chapter 41. And Job talks about, and I'm going to paraphrase this for sake of time because we're running out of time on this program. He mentions another creature called Leviathan. Now he talks about, again, you can read all the description of this. 
And I, I pulled out highlights here. The, who could open the doors of his face with his terrible teeth all around his face? He has rows of scales that are his prides. They all stick together and cannot be parted. His sneezings flash forth light out of his mouth, go burning lights, sparks of fire shoot out, smoke goes, smoke goes out of his nostrils, flame goes out of his mouth, and when he raises himself up, the mighty are afraid. When I started researching this, one of the possibilities came up, and this is uh, from dinofandom.com. There was a giant crocodile that existed in prehistoric times that was much larger larger than a modern crocodile, ranging around eight tons. You look at the description of what Leviathan was. Now, I know this is a, a picture and a description of Satan. We get that, right? The great red dragon. When you look up dragon, it comes from the Greek word dracon, and it's where we get a serpent, all right? But this, again, if we was to give a, a, de a depiction of this, it sounds like this creature, a giant crocodile there. You have the rows of teeth his, who can open his mouth. You've got, you know, he, when he raises up out of the water, he's, he's fearful to the people around him. And then some would even go as far as to say, based on uh, Job chapter 41 verses. Uh, let me go back down here. Based on 19, it says out of his mouth goes burning lights and fire shoots out and smoke out of his nostrils. Well, this gives us a depiction of what mythology would call dragons. Now, some would tell you that dragons actually existed at one time. So what am I talking about? What I'm saying is dr dr uh, dinosaurs were real and they ex I believe they existed during the time of humanity. They were created alongside with each other. Listen, I don't have time to develop all this for the sake of, because I've got time running out on me, but you can go back, do your research, dig if you want, and you can go to certain caves and, and places in certain countries where there is references to historical evidence of dinosaurs and man living together. One of them is the uh, petroglyph petroglyph excuse me and natural bridges utah legends and stories of dragons all across europe uh the use of the dragon motif by the chinese but then in asia there is a picture of a dinosaur in the ruins of angkor outside of cambodia uh you've got these these carvings and paintings inside of caves and on walls and it's showing pictures of humans hunting down these giant animals that, that, that did not exist that don't exist in our time but did in their time so there's a lot of evidence on this and it's really fun guys if you go and start researching this it's to me it's intriguing i know my oldest son and i uh, could we have spent hours just researching this, digging this, and watching this stuff, and it's and we love this kind of stuff, and it's it's very informative, uh, and and so here's the bottom line. What I'm saying to you is, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, "You will not know the day nor the hour." of the precise time that Jesus returned, but you can know the days, uh, you can know the times and the seasons. You can know the climate in which you're in. You can look at the sky and tell when there's gonna be a storm, but you have got to discern the times and seasons that we're in. You're gonna see things happen in your lifetime that existed in the days of Noah. That's what he said here, as it were in the days of Noah so shall it be at the return of the Son of Man. And today, I hope um, by the help of the Holy Spirit that we gave you three stories, three stories to, 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 to chew on, to meditate on these things, uh, to, to, to discuss these. Are, these are talking points to discuss one another with your neighbors, your coworkers, your friends, your family. You know, pull them together. Say, check this out. Look at this. This is incredible. These things were happening in days of Noah, and they're happening again in our lifetime. So isn't this great? This is wonderful. This is yet a, more signs that we are, I believe, the generation that will see all these things come to pass in our lifetime. And I want to, and having said that, I want to leave you with Luke 21, 28. Jesus said, when you begin 
to see all these things coming to pass. Look up and lift up your heads for your redemption is surely drawing near. Guys, we're going to sign off for today on this Wednesday, March 15th. We plan on being back here right in the studios here on the 16th on Thursday night to be with another great broadcast with you. Listen, uh, Monday, next Monday, it looks like we've already got this locked in. We're just... We're, bring, we're uh, trying to get some stuff cleared up and confirmation on this, but we're going to have Michael Snyder on the program. Uh, we've talked about having him on. We're going to get him on, and we're going to talk about the current economic shaking that's happening around the globe. I want to really just let him loose, let him give some insight on this. We're going to talk about scriptures, where this is at prophetically, where this is leading, what to look for. Um, and how serious this thing is. We're, I'm going to get him in there and we're going to give him 45 minutes to an hour. And we're, we're, I, I, I believe you're going to really enjoy this segment. So listen, don't forget, again, download the free app so you can keep up with all of our podcasts and all of our headlines. And as always, we want to give you the opportunity if this ministry is a blessing to you and informs you, it equips you, and encourages you on a week-to-week basis. Pray about coming, uh, becoming a monthly partner. You can do that two different ways. You can give electronically through the app or through the main website, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com, or right there on your screen. If you're watching, you can give by check or money order, and you can make that out to End Time Headlines. P.O. Box 1391 right here in Monroe, Georgia. That's 30655. So we love you guys. God bless you. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, push notifications. This gets our content out there and gets us visible in the algorithm. So we're going to sign off for today. Until we see you tomorrow night, may the Lord bless you, keep you, and may his countenance shine upon you. We'll see you later. Thank you for listening to the End Time Headlines podcast. We pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message. For more information about how you can help partner with our ministry, please visit endtimeheadlines.org.